Hi, this is Joel Persinger, The Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I'm very, very grateful that you do. I'm out here on the P2K range, lower shotgun range again, in my favorite little shady spot. And I don't know if you can hear, but the shotguns are going off in the background in the neighboring range and the rock quarry is working. And so there's lots of background noise around here that hopefully we've filtered out for you a little bit. I've got a diamond in the rough today, and I wanted to show it to you specifically because sometimes when you're out shopping around or you're going to the gun show or you're looking around for maybe an old gun, you run into something that you think, this thing can't be worth beans, and every once in a while, you find a jewel. And that's the case with this little high standard 22 Sentinel. Now, if you look at this thing closely, and we'll get some close-up shots for you, it's really rough. I mean, the barrel is kind of rusted and the finish is all messed up and everything else. I don't know, a lot of people thought of them as junk guns because they were inexpensive, but they're actually very well-made guns and they're very, very accurate. They are enormously fun to shoot and extraordinarily reliable. But the first versions, the R100, were missing one thing. They did not do, let me get the cylinder out here for you. They did not do this. In other words, there was no return spring on the ejector rod. So you'd push it out, you know, you'd dump all your empties out, and then you'd forget to pull the ejector rod back up and go to close it, and you'd have this crash of the ejector star up against the frame, and it would mar the frame and everything else because there was no little return spring. Well, obviously people didn't like that very much, and sales weren't uh, as good as they probably should have been, maybe, I don't know, but I do know that High Standard figured out that that wasn't a desirable configuration, and in the following models, the R102, I think, and this, this is an R103, and I, I think they went through R109, they all have the return spring that uh, resets the ejector star and the ejector rod for you. But they're real simple little revolvers, 9-shot, 22, um, they close up real nice and the cylinder swings out. There's no cylinder release up here. You just pull out on the ejector rod and swing it right out just like that. They're very accurate, fixed sights, uh, kind of a heavy trigger pull, but it's a nice trigger, trigger press and real nice single action trigger press. But here's the story with this gun. The finish is horrible. It's marred up. It, it looks terrible. You pick it up and you say to yourself, it, you know, you're asking yourself, is this thing even going to shoot? And what you don't realize is the reason it looks terrible is because it was sitting uh, on top of a cabinet in a workshop in the sun, kind of just like that, uh, just sitting up there, and somebody put it up there and left it up there for decades and forgot it. And so it sat in the sun coming through the window, and it got beat up you know, by the sun's rays, and it just sat, and it sat, and it sat, and it sat, and it sat. So the finish is horrible, but the operation of the gun is like new. Its trigger press is smooth, it shoots like new. We looked at it internally, looked at the, at the rifling and everything else, it's been shot very little. And so my buddy picked this thing up for next to nothing because the people he bought it from thought it was junk. So if you haven't seen one of these, by the way, this is probably, these little guns, these little high standard Sentinels are probably one of the best used gun values around for 22 revolvers. If you ever run into one, you, you, darn, you darn near can't break them with a hammer. They're, they're very accurate for a, a little inexpensive gun, and they can be picked up for next to nothing because people think they're junk, and they're not. They're actually a well-made little gun. High standard's still in business, as far as I know, and I think they make rifles. They still make their beautiful little semi-automatic uh, 22s and so on. I don't know that they make the Sentinel anymore. I suspect that they don't, and I apologize to you. I was kind of busy this week teaching, and I didn't get a chance to check. But if I can find out any information about it, I will. And I will put the link for, cent for High Standard in the, uh, in the description of this video for you if you want to look at their website. Uh, but in any case, let's get this thing out on the range and we'll shoot it. And you can see how well this little revolver that was picked up for a song because it was ugly. It's the ugly duckling. Uh, we'll just see if it really is a swan when we get it out on the range. Guns that have a story really fascinate me. I love the story behind them. I suspect that you might too. You know, a gun's just a gun, just a piece of equipment, but when you attach a human story to it, it adds a lot to the value of the gun, and it just makes it more fun to shoot. And this gun has a story. 
Now, I got to be honest, I have no idea who bought it originally. I have no idea how many owners it's had. I have no idea who actually took it and set it up on that cabinet and left it there for decades and decades sitting in the sun. But somebody did, and they forgot it. And it's, you know, maybe that's you. I might get a, you never know, I might get a, a, a note saying, hey, wait a minute, I'm the guy that put it up there. Wouldn't that be cool? If that happens, I'll let you know. But this is a, a great example of a gun that was kind of left behind and forgotten and uh, is not the prettiest thing on the earth because it sat out in the sun for a long time. But because it wasn't shot very much, it just runs like a Swiss watch. It's very accurate and it's a boatload of fun to shoot. I asked my buddy if he was going to refinish it and he said, no, man, it takes away the story. So he takes it and carts it around with him if he's out in the boonies or takes it out for he and his kids to shoot and they have a lot of fun with it. The grips, even, even though it sat in the sun for years, are still in great shape. It's just the finish is messed up. But otherwise, it's a great pistol. And these little high standard uh, pistols are generally good pistols. I mean, they, they were accused of being cheap guns and, and crummy guns, but they really weren't. They're very well made. Uh, very inexpensive pistols and if you run into one at a gun show or something check it out take a look at it you might find it's been shot very little and they can be picked up for darn near nothing and you've got yourself a great little 22 revolver nine shots and a lot of fun to shoot with a great trigger press and boy I, you just darn near can't beat them for the price they're probably the biggest 22 revolver bargain uh, in used guns out there Anyway, thank you very much for watching my channel. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Uh, we'll send you a new uh, little notice if you subscribe that we've got new videos out. We make new videos every week, generally two a week. We try to squeak out three once in a while if we can. Just depends on how busy my son and I are. And we try to make them as interesting as we can so we don't bore you to tears. But uh, if you subscribe, then you'll, you'll know when we send them out. And if you haven't already joined the National Rifle Association and you're not a member but you like gun videos and you like shooting, you need to be a member, in my humble opinion. So I'm going to put a link right here for you to be able to do that. As you know, I'm sure our Second Amendment uh, rights are under attack constantly from every direction. And joining the NRA is the first step to fighting to keep those rights for yourself and for others. Also, if you happen to have guns and you might end up using one for self-defense or you keep a gun in the house for that, or you carry a gun with you when you're out and about, you might want to be aware of the fact that you're probably going to get arrested and sued if you ever use it. And that's okay. That is the way it is. I don't like it, but it is what it is. We can, however, put some things in place to protect ourselves. What I've done is I've signed up for Second Call Defense. It's a great program that allows me to get a hold of an attorney in the middle of the night if I need it. And at the same time, will provide me some money for a bail bondsman to bail me out of jail and provide some money for attorneys to defend me in civil court and criminal court in case I get sued by the family of the thug I had to shoot to defend myself, or if I get prosecuted by the local district attorney because they're trying to get reelected and I look like an, an opportunity for them to, to have a big case or something stupid along those lines. I need to have that protection for me. You might want to check out Second def Call Defense so you can have that protection for you. So I put a link here for you to do that. You can check it out on their website and uh, see whether it's something you might like to have in place in case you ever have to use a firearm to defend yourself or someone you love. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful week and be safe.